So Terry, yes. thanks for climbing into the buzz bubble. It was a pleasure to have you, and we're gonna just jump in. Fantastic. Um, wave branding, is that a term you guys have coined? And tell me a little bit about what it does and how you use it to grow a brand. Yeah, sure. So yeah, we created the concept of wave branding, and the whole idea is you know, we put culture at the center of everything we do. So we're watching what's happening in culture from the smallest little fringe signals to things that have gone mass. Right? right, and way branding is the concept of catching those things when they're very first forming, uh, and connecting brands to them, and then riding the wave. And we believe that for brands to be successful today, you have to create relevance. And to create relevance, you have to be synchronized with what's happening in culture. So the whole idea is, if you can capture it early, and then you can ride it until it really uh, it becomes mass, then you have an opportunity to be in the middle of the conversation, as opposed to trying to buy your way into the conversation. Right, right. The, the, the most challenging thing for me to get my brain around is the tying into the conversation. So sure. tell me about how that happens and, and how it stays sincere to a brand's voice. Yeah, so, so one of the things that we do with every brand when we start is we uh, understand the brand's DNA. And a DNA is, if you think about uh, the values of a brand, which has been done in advertising for Forever, right? right? We do something similar where we understand what is what what makes that brand tick, but we do it not only from what the brand says, but also from uh, what the consumer says, and okay. then we look at where those overlaps are. So if this is this is on one side is what uh, consumers think about the brand, on the other side is what the brand says it stands for. We look right. at where there's overlap, and we try to understand how we can create communications that are authentic with those consumers. And when we see something burst in culture, we do the same thing with what we see in culture. So say you see something about 3D printing on the moon, just, uh, you know, random thing. Okay. We would go in and we would break it down to its DNA and look at what the DNA overlap is between that cultural asset or that burst and, what, and, and the actual brand. So I guess uh, is a big part of the process, the matching, you can't you know, just say, oh, 3D branding on the moon, that's a great, yeah, topic. Exactly. Well, we don't have any brands that really align. Yeah. So we have that all I the guess time. It's there's things finding that what is the right conversation to be yeah. part of. Yeah. There's uh, there's like things that that are super popular in culture that your audience. So say I'm targeting millennials that they are sharing, they're engaging, they're talking about, but it just doesn't have a DNA match. So we look at things on two dimensions. We look at it how big it is. We call it the energy score. So uh, you know how much buzz does it have in the here and now, and then we look at how closely aligned it is to the brand DNA and based. Based on those two dimensions, that's how we determine if it's a good fit for a brand. Okay. There are some times that this is a game of, because we're moving fast, right? right. And so there, there are some times where you go a little bit more with the energy and a little less with the DNA, and there are times where you, you want to make sure it's really close to DNA, and it really depends on what kind of burst it is. You know, if it's something that's a, that's really way outside of what the brand usually connects to, it's really right. hard to be authentic with that. Sure. But if they've connected with things like that in the past, it makes it much easier.